I want to welcome you to the Pro Mindset Podcast. The Pro Mindset Podcast is all about diving into the headspace that results in championship performance. High performing athletes, winners, have this mental flow and have a positive headspace for their performances and success. Join me, Craig Doman, sports attorney and NFL agent, on this podcast. I will interview pro athletes, college athletes, football coaches, and sports personalities. Together, we can discover how you can get in the flow and have your own pro mindset. Okay, so I want to welcome to Pro Mindset today a young lady who's a, a runner at the University of Washington, Katie Rainsberger. Katie, welcome to the show today. Wow, thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to get talking. Okay, Katie, we spoke just for a minute before we got started here. We kind of talked a little bit about what you're up to. Why don't you share for our audience kind of your history? You're from Colorado Springs. You went to Air Academy, played in multiple sports, and then kind of take it from there, kind of share with everybody who you are and what you're doing in sport. Yeah, so like you said, I grew up in Colorado Springs, went to Air Academy High School, played varsity soccer, and I ran track. And then I, my freshman year, I was at University of Oregon where um, we won the Triple Crown. So we won the national championship in cross-country, indoor track, and then outdoor track. And it was the first time ever that a female program had done that. Um, my sophomore year went into it pretty excited, good momentum, and I got hurt, and then my coach left, my distance coach left. So I made the hard decision to transfer with my coach to University of Washington. I've spent three years here, you know, had my fair share of adversity and setback and um, injury and, you know, mental health struggles. And um, I'm finally getting to the point now where I'm really excited about what I can do and we're heading into the championship season. I've got my last NCAA championship next week, actually. Okay, Katie. So walk us through when you're at the University of Oregon, yeah. And then your coach leaves and you're dealing with some injury. Where did you go mentally when you were going through that? Was it an easy transition, just a you know black and white decision like, hey, I'm just going to go follow my coach? Or did you go through the typical, should I stay, should I go, here are the reasons why I should stay, here are the reasons I should go? Yeah, no, it was honestly a gut reaction. Like when she called me up and told me that, she was leaving I was like okay by the end of the phone call I was like all right like what do I have to do to go to Washington like I'm coming with you it wasn't a matter of like if it was a matter of how and I would just say like while I was hurt she checked in with me every day and it wasn't so much of like hey what did you do for your cross training today it was how are you doing like can I do anything to like make your day better and it was like this person my coach cares about me as a human being I've built a relationship of trust and respect, and those are things that I value in the person and the relationship that I have with my with my coach. And so, I didn't think I was going to find that anywhere else. And to be honest, I didn't want to even try because I knew what I what I had was great. It was not going to what I had was great, and what I it's what I wanted in a coaching relationship. It's why I went through the recruiting process, and you know, my senior year of high school. So. Yeah, it was not so much a difficult decision just because my gut was like, this is what you need to do. And I'm for sure so happy that I made that decision. Well, that's a great message for coaches out there to really get to know their players as people, not just athletes. Right. Right. Okay, so share with everyone some of your accolades because I looked at your – uh, resume. It looks like you've been an All-American. You've run several different distances. You've run track and cross country and indoor and outdoor and all these things. What would you say is your marquee event? And then what are some of the accolades that you've received? Oh, gosh. Okay. So that answer has changed just this outdoor season. If you had asked me a year ago what my event was, I would have said the 1500, the mile, the 3K. But this year I decided to give the steeplechase a go. And for those who are unfamiliar with the steeplechase, it's uh, three kilometers around the track, but it has barriers, hurdles, and a water jump. So you clear 35 barriers in 3K, and you have seven 
water jump. And I have the Olympic standard or the trial standard in that event, and I'll be going to Instagram Blaze um, for that. And it's not very often that people try a new event and make it to the Olympic trial. So I'm really excited and hopeful about that. But I'm also a 12-time uh, All-American. I've been third three times at NCAAs. I I was a part of the team that set the NCAA collegiate record in the DMR, um, three-time national championship team, several times on Team USA, Gatorade Athlete of the Year. So going back a way, as I've been running for a long time. <laughs> Thanks. Well, congratulations on that. So, Katie, holy smokes, girl. You've got all these – you've been All-American 12 times. You've done all this stuff. But you – and I'm not picking on you. I'm just challenging no. you, okay? Yeah. yeah. You said you finished third three times in yeah. the national championships. Yeah, I've never won. What? Okay, that's okay. What <laughs> is the difference between – I'm going to talk about seconds now. Yeah. What's the difference between you finishing third and finishing first? Um, I think this. I have this mindset that I'm in it for the long game and that a few third-place finishes aren't going to – deter me from not getting, you know, back on my feet and try, you know, keep showing up tomorrow. I'm not going to take any shortcuts. If it takes me 10 years to win a damn race, sorry, then I'm going to be in it those whole 10, you know, 10 years. I'm uh, not afraid of the challenge. The only thing you have control over on the day is yourself. I can't control if runner A or B or she or he or whatever are, you know, better me than me on the day. I can only control my attitude and my effort. And so worrying about, like, like if I go show up to the line the most prepared I can be and I give myself the best shot possible of winning and I walk off the track and I, you know what, I did everything possible I could have today to win and I didn't, then I'll show up tomorrow and try my best again tomorrow. I think, like, it's easy to get, like, lose sight of the, the long game when you're so wrapped up in, like, a one individual performance. So I try and, like, just reframe it as not getting third. It just means, like, I'm, you know, like, I'm still reaching my potential and I'm still in it and I keep showing up, if that makes sense. It does. You've got a growth mindset in the sense that you're trying to get better, you're trying to get, you're trying to improve, and you're not necessarily getting all caught up on, you know, whether you finish first, second, or third because you're right. seeing improvement in your performances. But I got to I gotta jump in here and say, when you go yeah. to the Olympic trials for steeplechase, yeah. and you've got an opportunity to go to the Olympics, yeah. and let's say you do qualify for the Olympics and you represent the United States in the Olympics, and then you get a chance to go to the Olympics, does that mindset change at some, at, in some way that even though you always want to get better and you want to be better in 10 years than you are today and you want to be better in five than you are today, but you want to win that race. Right. And that's how, how, do you, how do you shift your mindset so that you can give optimal performance and click on all cylinders and put yourself in the best possible uh, opportunity to win that race? Yeah, no, I think it's super tough because obviously as competitors you want to win the race, but, you know, you go into the race consciously or subconsciously wanting to win the race. But if you go into the race only focused on winning the race, then you you are also setting yourself up for, you know, failure because there are things out of your control on the day that you don't necessarily – that you can't necessarily control. So it's a really hard thing to reconcile. Like how do you, as an athlete, work countless hours, want to win the race, but if you go into this race so outcome focused that you lose sight of the bigger picture, like have you won the race? I mean, my coach always tells me that, you know, for example, like uh, for a lot of track races, there's prelims and finals. And a lot of people go into the prelim thinking about the final, and then they don't make it out of the prelim because they were thinking about the final the next day. Or they don't make it out of the prelim because they think that they have to do something crazy extraordinary to make the final when really they just needed to do what they were capable of, you know, like what they very clearly been doing all season, but they put too much into this prelim 
when really they just need to be like calm and level headed and just like execute what they knew, like what you're able to execute. So I think it's finding a healthy balance of being competitive and trying to beat the people around you, but also just like trying to be the best version of yourself. Totally get it. And I agree with you. And I think one of the things you're alluding to is that if you simplify a competition into two parts, the outcome and the input, you only have control over the input. What you put into it, you know, what kind of prep you do, what kind of mental preparation, what type of visualization, stretching, diet, sleep, all these things. You do have control over, over all that stuff, all the input. You may right. not have control over the output. Exactly. Right? So with that being said, what is your mental prep game in anticipation of a big race? Yeah. What's your routine? So, well, for about the, for the few days leading up to, I would say about five, um, I have just a nightly uh, visualization like technique that I um, wind down to, and it just involves me playing out the last 600 meters where I'm, like, feeling confident and in control and, you know, just lighten it up out there. And I play that. I have some, like, positive – I wouldn't even say they're positive mantras, but I have a few things that, you know, that's – they change depending on the race, depending on the um, environment, the scenario, and also where I'm at just in my life in general that I use in training. Sometimes it's as easy as just a slap. But, you know, like you said earlier, you have to be present when you're competing out there, especially in a long-distance event when you're like, I have how many laps left? You have to be present. So, you know, something like just a slap keeps me present or focus on your feet. Then I feel my feet touch the ground. I have a few techniques and things that I, you know, can tell myself while I'm working out or while I'm racing. And then I also have a sports psychologist, a therapist, whichever you pre- term you prefer, that I talk to regularly. And I find that hugely beneficial. I think that there's a lot of athletes coming out talking about mental health. And I think, you know, I can't tell you how helpful um, just being able to talk about these things have been, especially in light of all the uncertainty athletes have faced in the past year. And then, uh, you know, 10 minutes before the gun goes off, I have just like a quick little, I wouldn't say it's a visualization, but I have some like a stance that I do um, where I, you know, jump up pretty high and then I, you know, give my legs a good slap. And I do that before every race. And I feel like, oh, it's more like a ritual, but I feel like it just kind of plays into, like, the performance mindset, like getting the mind ready, getting the body ready. And then, yeah, just, like, being able to, at the end of the day, separate, like, know that my self-worth as an individual is totally separate from my success as an athlete. And, like, constantly reminding myself of that has been hugely helpful. I like that. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Yeah. When you do you ever watch movies? I'm sure you do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you, in your own head, try to predict the outcome of a movie? Occasionally, yeah. Okay. So I do. I'm always thinking about, wonder where this is going. Who's going to fall in love with who? Who's going to kill who? Or whatever the case may be. Yeah. My only recommendation to your pre-event routine would be when you visualize. Visualize yourself in multiple situations, and maybe you do. But instead of just visualizing yourself in the last 600 meters, visualize yourself in a torrential downpour (laughs) and overcoming. In a crosswind that's going 50 miles an hour. Or a headwind, you know, that every time you turn, you're going against the wind and you got the wind. It's a different rhythm to the race. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. Right, and then maybe there's a school that you're competing against that has two racers. One of them's the real one, and the other one's the rabbit, just trying to kill everybody else the first half of the race, and then pretty much fades, knowing how you're going to deal with that. Right, yeah. So I don't know which of those might not be realistic, but something tells me all of them are possible. Right. 
and visualize yourself being successful in every single every single one of those. Yeah. Yeah. And and more because you can create more than I can because you're doing it. Right. So no. that it doesn't right so that regardless of what happens in the race, you've already raced it. You've already been there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think another thing to add to that is I've you know there's undoubtedly moments in a endurance event where you're like wait why the hell am I this hurts like <laughs> ow like a, or you know it's kind of like a um you get to this moment where you you don't know if you can finish and it, it happens every time there's like a a moment where you're like I don't know if I can go any faster or I don't know if I can follow that move there's like that moment where you're just like in the thick of it and I you know visualize myself opting in and like choosing to go with it, and I, I change the point in which that happens um, throughout my visualizations. Like sometimes it happens halfway through the race, sometimes it happens, you know, lap three, sometimes it happens towards the end, and just like seeing myself being like, you know, take for me it's taking deep breath and relaxing my shoulders. Like those are physical cues, but like you said, like you know, having different moments and different case scenarios, and then also just. For me, I'm, I'm telling myself to expect the unexpected. You know, things aren't going to go the way that you plan them to. And how do you react when it don't is a huge part of being a successful athlete. No doubt about it. Well, one of the things, I don't do a lot of running these days, but when I did run, I would always feel pain in different places. It would just creep in. And as yeah. I got older, it would, it would come sooner. And you have that decision to make, do you keep going or do you shut it down? And I got to believe that, you know, you're at a much higher crazy level, but you probably still have those same challenges. Yeah, I think um, as like many, you know, top level athletes will say, it's like something kind of almost always hurts. And it's waking up and figuring out, is this a hurt that I can run through today or is this something that I should, you know, kind of look into and, there's, you know, a pain associated with running also and um, being able to kind of almost embrace the pain, I feel like, is um, another key component of being an endurance athlete. It's like you lean into it a little bit. You lean into that discomfort. Um, and I feel like it's kind of almost like a life lesson, you know, like when things are hard, when things are uncomfortable or when you're, you know, not doing well, like how can you lean into it a little bit more? But, yeah. Plus, there are days where you wake up and you actually, you genuinely don't want to run there. You genuinely don't want to get out of bed, but you you find a way. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go back to the steeplechase. It's a new event you picked up. You mentioned that there's seven water jumps. You know, I've I've been a track fan my whole life, and I've seen the steeplechase. How crazy is it to get wet feet in the middle of a race? I mean, is that a non-factor, or um, is it? Well, only one sh- if you're if you're doing it right, only one shoe should get wet. <laughs> the same shoe uh, every time. Yes, and to be honest, I haven't noticed it at all because my sh- my spikes are pretty um like breathable the the material, and it's a very light touch in the water, so I actually don't really notice it. Gotcha, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so share with me, share with us a situation where you had to overcome adversity and maybe you didn't win the medal, maybe you didn't win the race, but you won, you overcame. Do you want a specific race or do you want just a life um, ad- adversity situation? I'll go with wherever you go. Okay. So I, you know, shared with you some of the accolades that I've, earned in the past few years so I'm you know heading back to the NCAA championships next week but this is the first time that I've made outdoors in three years I made it as a freshman and then I was I want to say 16th my um, sophomore year and 12 make it through from regionals so 12 make it through from regionals to nationals I was like 16th my sophomore year and I suffered a pretty severe panic or sophomore year was the year I was hurt. So sophomore year I was hurt, and I was, you know, trying my hardest to 
make it back in time for nationals, but it didn't quite happen. I was 16th, and that was a tough pill to swallow, but it was also like, you know, like, all right, well, you were hurt, so there's, you know, it's okay. And then I come back my junior year, and the the mental side of component, like, of racing was really giving me pretty, at the time, severe panic attacks. But I didn't really want to admit that they were panic attacks because they felt like I was just fatigued and tired, but it was a, it was a panic attack, and I got 13th at regionals. I was the first person. Oh, uh. Yeah. Wow. Then, you know, my year last year, I was like, all right, this is the year I make it back to NCAAs and COVID. I'm at the indoor nationals and they send us home. I'm racing in hours and they send us home. Um, so it's like this three year long buildup of like not making it to nationals and being hurt, suffering from panic attacks, COVID. And then finally, Last week, I went into the regional meet, and I went in there with a lot of expectation and pressure, and I was seated first in my heat, and I feel like I navigated it really well. I won my heat, and I'm heading back to NCAAs next next week. Where's the Where's the championships at? Eugene. So back in, in Oregon. Eugene. Back <laughs> in Oregon. Yeah. Making a little full circle here. Okay, so you're a week out. What is going to be your approach in the next week? And regardless of whether you finish first or 12th, Mm -hmm. what in your mind is going to be success? So this, I guess this last week, I'm really trying not to change much in terms of um, it was Sunday today, so we went and sat at the docks for a little bit. You know, those sorts of things. I'm still, you know, trying to, I think that I'm happy. When I race well, I'm happiest. I'm happy when I race well. So those things kind of play into each other. So not changing too much. Um, Just, you know, maybe getting an extra hour of sleep, maybe taking another nap here and there, you know, really dialing in that nutrition, um, lots of electrolytes, those sorts of things. At this point, the work is done. Do you know what I mean? Like all of the training sessions and hard workouts and lifting, that's all done. You know, we're, we're in taper mode, so... We're lightening it up. We're freshening it up. And at this point, I'm just so incredibly grateful um, to be here, to be back at my last NCAAs, to be competing. You know, last year at this time, we didn't know when that was going to happen again. So just kind of, you know, making sure I remember not to take advantage or, you know, not to forget that, you know, it really is a great experience that we have here and a really good opportunity. And speaking of opportunity, um, I love the movie <laughs> Miracle, and one of my favorite quotes is great, oh, what is it, um, great moments are born from great opportunity. So great moments are born from great opportunity. And so next week is a great opportunity to really just, like, showcase all the hard work that I've put in and to go out there and, like, you know, everyone's version of success is different. You know, I – just want to get the most out of myself on the day. Like only I will really know if I got the most out of myself on that day in terms of like when I get to that moment in the race and it's hard and it hurts and I don't know if I can do it. Like, did I choose to opt in? Like, did I choose to fully believe in myself? Did I take a chance on myself? Did I put fear aside and really just go for it? And those are only questions and things that I can answer. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's between me and me. So Versions of success are hard to define, but I think I'll know at the end of the day if I, you know, was able to accomplish and everything that I wanted to. And, you know, like you can't really control the outcome, but if I put myself in the best position possible to do well, I think I'll have a pretty good outcome. Well, I think you're going to do fabulous with that approach. i got to ask you a couple questions. Out of the 12 girls, where are you seated? You know, where's your time trials put you? I think 30, I think I'm third. So you're in the top three just going in on personal best this season? Yeah, going on in on personal best this season. Okay. So what event is this going to be, steeplechase or something else? Yeah, it'll be the steeplechase. Okay. Now, is it 3,000 meters? How far is the steeplechase? Yep, 3K. Okay. So in the the national championships, are they going to make it like 10 meters longer or anything like that? 
<laughs> they're going to make us go over the men's height of the hurdle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're going to change that? I mean, what are they doing? Is anything different? Nope, nothing's different. Nothing's different. So I have studied, like, championship performance, Super right. Bowls, national championships. And the people, the athletes and the competitors that do the best treat it just like a normal race. Like any Even other though day. any other day, the outcome's different, the consequences are different, the, re- the recognition is different, but the competition's the same. Okay. And so, like, look at a guy like Tom Brady who's the GOAT in the NFL and has won seven Super Bowls out of ten or whatever it's been. Right. He treats every, he treats every Sunday the same, even yeah. when it's a Super Bowl. Yeah. doesn't put more stress on himself, doesn't prepare differently, doesn't prepare more, doesn't psych himself out doesn't carry more pressure. He plays between the lines the same. And what I see happening is let out of the 12 girls that are competing, at least half won't meet their personal best or surpass their personal best because they will treat it differently. Right. This is the national championship. I've got to be somebody I'm not to be somebody I want to be. Right. No. If you want to be somebody, be the best version of you, not try to be somebody you're not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? And so the, the competitors that can just be comfortable in their own skin, be confident that the preparation and, and the effort and the energy and everything they've put into the season is on, on point. Exactly. And, then, and think clearly and run freely are the ones that are going to end up on the podium. Right. It's an opportunity to, you know, really just see, like, how good can I be on this day? How present can I be on this day? And I'm genuinely excited to see. The ambiance of, you know, more family members show up and it's televised and all these things happen, right? Oh, yeah. It really it really messes with people's heads, but I just kind of laugh. I'm like, all right. You know, like um, last weekend... When we were qualifying, there was a weird weather storm, so our time got pushed, and there was thunderstorms, and I was like, you know what, just throw more, like, what's one more thing at this point after the year we've had, like, what's a weather delay? What's, um, what's a, you know, like, because for me, I don't view it as, I mean, it's just another day, you know what I mean? Like, it's just another performance. I've had some good experience the past five years, like, learning how to navigate these sort of championships, and yeah, like you said, how to treat it like any other race, which is really important. Well, I think the other thing that uh, champions do that a lot of guys, a lot of people don't do is they're thankful and they have gratitude for the opportunity right? instead of being stressed out about the opportunity. Exactly. And so just from a meditation standpoint, the preparation and the, and the and awareness standpoint, if you just go, God, how cool is it? that I finally get to do this after I took it for granted my freshman year. I thought I was going to do it every year. Yeah, yeah, I did. Right? I t- yes, yeah. Every, Of course you did. Everybody in your situation would have, right? And right. it's like it's like Dan Marino played in the Super Bowl his, his rookie year and never played him again. If, you, you know, if you'd asked him after the first Super Bowl when he lost for the Dolphins way back in 83 or 84, whatever it was, he would have said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in more. He never was in another one. What I think works the best is to treat the extraordinary opportunity like an ordinary opportunity right. because you eliminate the pressure. Because yeah. guess what? The only person that can put pressure on you is who? Yourself. Yourself. Yeah. I mean, other people can try to put pressure on you or not try to, but, you know, you can receive it. But you have that control, and so you just got to block out any type of pressure so that you can treat this extra. This is an extraordinary opportunity as an ordinary opportunity. Right. Yeah, Uh, that makes sense. You know, and I don't know, I don't know, you probably weigh 140 or something. I don't know what girls weigh when they're doing the steeplechase, but the girls that take on that pressure are going to feel like, they're carrying 190 pounds the last 600 meters. Yes, 
Yes, they do. Yeah, the the burden, the extra burden of all that pressure really weighs you down. It does. So where are you going to go? How are you going to celebrate after you win the national championship? Because I can already tell you're going to win it. Um, I will be getting a juicy burger, french fries, and a milkshake. And then um, celebrating maybe a little bit with my with my parents. They'll be out there watching with my coach. Nothing too crazy because I have USA the next weekend. <laughs> gotcha. So do you have a favorite restaurant in Eugene you get to go back to? Um, so Prince Puckler's has legendary ice cream. Um, so I love that. I mean, Killer Burger has a great burger. It's a little bit controversial, but I love the peanut butter pickle burger. Um, peanut butter pickle and bacon. I'm telling you Oh, my you that. goodness. I'm telling you. Wow. You should <laughs> have one of those right before the race. Holy smokes. <laughs> great. It's, it's great. I'll definitely be getting myself one of those. Okay. So, Katie, you know, I appreciate you being on today especially yeah. with nationals yeah. next week. You know, I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you. Well, I want to wish you nothing but the best next week. I'm going to have to tune in to see how you do. I oh. expect you to do extremely well. And here's, <laughs> here's, here's my, here's my unsolicited counsel and, and advice is very few people chase their dreams. Everybody has a dream. Everybody does. It may not be in running. It may be another thing. Maybe in business or something else. But very few people have the courage to chase it fearlessly, with no fear of failure. Because once you, I had this conversation with my daughter today. She talked about how she's living right now with no fear because she's already failed. Yeah. And if if you can package the failure that you've experienced and you haven't experienced a lot right. but let's you know let's the only failure i can sense is that the disappointment of not getting the nationals a couple times okay yeah. take that failure and package it and be thankful for that right because yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. use it and to turn it into freedom to go be everything God created you to be, and if it's in his will and you put it, put the put the, the energy and effort into it next weekend, you end up with a gold medal. No, I love that. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, Katie Rainsberger, I'm just going to say it here for everybody right now. The <laughs> 2021 national champion in the steeplechase. <laughs> you know what? You got to put it out into the to the atmosphere. You got to um what what do they say? You got to speak it into existence. So here's what I want you to do before you go. Okay. All right. Uh Katie, would you please introduce yourself to the audience and recognize your greatest achievement? Hi. My name is Katie Reinsberger and I am the 2021 national champion in the steeplechase. Yeah, baby. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your evening now. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Pro Mindset. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. You can follow us on our website, promindsetpodcast.com, or on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Pro Mindset Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you the next time.